views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Welcome to Conscious Confidence Radio, a timeless wisdom with Sarah Main. Follow host Sarah Main on her ongoing journey of conscious confidence and gain timeless wisdom to unleash unparalleled confidence. A conscious confidence. Learn to ignite the living spark of wisdom, a new narrative for fulfillment contained in Sanskrit and the ancient, powerful, engaging, and fun conscious conversations to discover your own magnificent true self. Learn to dispel the fear shadow as Sarah provides essential knowledge about embracing change and the power of transformation. Get ready. Conscious Confidence starts now. Hey, everybody. I'm Dr. Pat. Hi, I'm Sarah Main. And, you know, this is a fantastic hour of Conscious Confidence Radio. This is about a timeless wisdom. And this is something that Sarah has created, not just from the perspective of a radio show, but from something much deeper, such a, something much more important. And today you're going to hear a bit more about that. Many of you know the work that Sarah has done in creating Conscious Confidence, a fantastic coaching platform, and more than a coaching platform, it's a way of being. Today you're going to hear from Sarah in several ways. But most importantly, you're going to hear about the seven steps from inspiration to transformation. Sarah, this is this is kind of exciting to really watch the journey of you and conscious confidence, but also to really share these powerful messages with people. Yep. Thank you, Pat. Um, Yes, the conscious confidence, conscious confidence development has definitely uh, tracked the seven steps from inspiration <laughs> to transformation or completion. <laughs> I'm on the journey. <laughs> oh my God. You know, it's something that we're talking about this because it's fascinating that you and I both, when we say yes to that thing that we're really called to do, the lessons that come with that are hard to explain, right? Absolutely, yeah. It never goes in a straight line, but everybody knows that. But but this topic is such an interesting one. I mean, you could spend a lifetime just studying this and coming to understand it. Um, But I thought it was important to talk about it today because Mm -hmm. the seven steps is there's sort of the shorthand for them. Um, but you could understand them as seven gateways, seven stages, seven phases, seven energies. Um, but it is like a law that operates and often in the development of something, when you say yes to something or you just decide to do something, which is the same as saying yes to something, um, there, it, it seems like it's going to be random, but actually it isn't. There are laws that govern it. Um, these are great laws, and I learned about them when I was very young. And my whole life, I've seen that when someone looks like they're in a state of confusion and they're lost, they're actually at a certain point along the process. And this was all laid out, you know, in the ancient wisdom traditions. So it's not new. It's just this knowledge has been largely forgotten. And therefore, people can lose heart and not realise what's actually going on, that there are greater forces operating as they proceed through a project or something they want to do, or basically they just say yes to some great calling within themselves. Yeah. You know, it's interesting for, I think, for me, as it is for many people and you sort of, of course, the the author of uh, Conscious Confidence and all of the wisdom and all your training, all of the things you're bringing to uh, the forefront for us today and in what you do, it, it is really fascinating once we look at the idea that there is a gateway from inspiration to transformation. Yeah. And 
and, and, and by the way, I love what you said before. Sometimes it doesn't seem like we will get from here to there, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, I mean, this can be understood. The, the, the seven steps can be understood at a very or just we decide, you know, as a, as a law of action that we decide we're going to do something, we get some idea, and that's the point of inspiration. It can be some amazing thing or just we just get, oh, I'm going to make a table, right? Yeah. <laughs> you get some idea, I'm going to bake a cake. And then there are steps, obviously, in order for that manifestation to occur. It doesn't just bump. I've got an idea. I'm going to make a table. There's a table. From that point, there's research. You've got to get the materials. Mm -hmm. Um, You've got to actually follow a process so that the table looks like a table at the end and functions like a table. I mean, it could be some avant-garde design, but in the end, it's got to have some sort of flat horizontal surface in some shape um, that is horizontal so that's items can be put on top of it otherwise it doesn't actually accord with the concept or the function of table it's got to table something but you know the the design around that you know is many and varied yeah but you've got to actually follow processes in their logical order in order to achieve that outcome yeah it's so interesting you're talking about that because you know what I'm struck by Anytime I've had to make something physical, like with my hands, I've yeah. never walked away from it. Meaning I've never, what, what is it? I've never given up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yet what you're talking about here is uh, the idea of making a table, understanding it, and also understanding that the gateways provide a pathway in a sense to a sense of freedom, right? Absolutely. And so the higher levels, I mean, it can be in a physical way, as we've described making a table, but the the um, ultimate example is the e- evolution of human consciousness from the individual point of view to a universal consciousness, from individual to universal or full realisation, full self-realisation. Um, and there are seven steps to that. And conscious confidence definitely um, is an example of its evolution, is an example along the way. Mm-hmm. I certainly wouldn't say I'm there fully there yet. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're, and I, the way I was taught was if you're standing there proclaiming, yep, I'm at level seven, then you actually are not. Because <laughs> that's an ego situation. I mean, that's, that's another conversation. Well, wh- what are the uh, origins of the seven gateways? Because I have to tell you, there's something powerful about saying seven gateways. I yeah. know I originally said steps. But yeah. now that I heard you say gateways, I really love that phrase, gateways. And I yeah. don't know why that seems so powerful to me today. Well, <laughs> it's a point of entry. <laughs> um, I mean, they happen naturally. It's not like you say, right, I've decided I'm, I'm now moving to the next gateway. It will happen naturally. Um, the, the origins are that these seven gateways were articulated, these seven steps or stages were articulated by a sage called Wasishta and he was speaking to his um, student who was the Prince Rama and this was originally written in Sanskrit many, many, many thousands of years ago. I, I'm, I'm going to look to my notes because I can read you a short <laughs> example it's from the, the Yoga Vasishta, the Yoga Vasishta, which some people may have heard of. Um, and he says, I shall now describe to you, O Rama, the seven states or planes of wisdom. And knowing them, you will not be caught in delusion. And delusion means, you know, you get lost thinking something's something other than it is. So you're being deluded. So he said, if you know this, you won't be caught in delusion. So he says, pure wish or intention is the first, inquiry is the second, the third is when the mind becomes subtle, establishment in truth is the fourth, total freedom from attachment or bondage is the fifth, the sixth is cessation of objectivity. Now you've got to understand the this is an English translation of Sanskrit, but this is where individual objects um, 
dissolve and that means you don't actually live in a world full of objects that you perceive you understand the underlying Mm -hmm. consciousness behind them and the seventh is beyond all these so that is you know it's classic sanskrit um that when you translate it it may seem a bit obscure and my job is to unpack that and make it more practical more accessible because this knowledge is gold 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 and it will help You know what I love about this, Sarah, is that, and this is just my point of view, in the world that I've got to know over 15 years doing this, many people have touched upon a pseudo acronym process, sort of almost, almost a conversation. But in working with you, this wisdom you're sharing is so clear. Mm. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not saying I understand it. I'm, I'm, that is not what I'm <laughs> saying. I'm not saying I get it. But the clarity by which you talk about it, and and what that means, though, for people that work with you in your coaching program is they will understand what to do. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Not that everybody's going to do it the mm. same, but the way that you're sharing this wisdom, mm. the absence of cliches. The absence of, you know, sort of how to go about this from a totally material world perspective just Mm. hasn't been working for us. (laughs) And you're bringing something that is just, it's timeless, but it hits the root of who we are. And I think that's what I'm really struck by right now uh, uh, about this. And I think that's very special. Well, yes, it, it, it's, I mean, you know, I'm lost for words. Um, thank you. The, this is what I was given, and this is source, S-O-U-R-C-E, source wisdom, and it, it is, was given and is given. It's always available. It's ever available. It's a thread of consciousness that is ever available. Um. And it holds the potency and the strength and the power and the clarity, as you've noted, um, for all time because it's there for humanity to transcend consciousness, to raise their level of consciousness. But no one can do it for you. And this is the power of understanding the seven steps because in the end when that point of inspiration strikes, when that desire arises and the first step is called in Sanskrit shubhecha which means good desire shubha ichcha it's a compound it means good desire good impulse inspiration and that in a sense comes from we know not where inspiration can strike at any moment you can be hearing something someone says and there's one thing in it and bam it hits you you can be reading a book And, you know, it could be a history book or a book on engineering or I'm thinking of things that are sort of out of my field particularly. It could be anything. And suddenly something in the book just, bam, it hits you. And it will be exactly what you need to know. But it's the sort of inspiration that brings an energy with it and it starts you um, in a sense on the path, on a journey. It opens up this energy that and a desire comes with it there's a decision and a desire and they're almost synonymous they go together that you want to be that you are greater than you feel yourself to be now and you want to realize that and that could be through a project that you're working on like conscious confidence for example Mm -hmm. trust me I didn't see this coming I had another idea. I was working on that. And then you emailed me <laughs> out of the blue. Out of the blue. I never heard of you. I know. Isn't that incredible, though? It is incredible. And when we started talking, bam, and we were talking about actually about something else, and then bam, it happened. It's just I'm more aware of it because I un- I know about the seven steps. I wouldn't say I fully understand. No one can ever say that. But, you know, I, I'm aware of it and I thought, uh-uh, something's here, <laughs> you know, and, and then, then it's a case of following and keeping up. Exactly. Following and keeping up, I love it. Now, you're in a different room. Now, when we used to do the shows on the back, 
there would be a sign in your handwriting and conscious confidence. And we'll talk <laughs> about that when we come back. When we come back, we're going to take this journey. But the thing I love about this is that, you know, two words, conscious confidence, two words has such profoundly timeless meaning and the energy and the implication of what you're talking about today, the gateways, the seven gateways, which we'll talk about, they are by far, if we are awake enough, our eyes wide open, we will get the messages on what we should do next. And also when we come back later on, we'll talk about what happens when the gateways are in front of us and we turn around and walk the other way. (laughs) Let's take a short break, everybody. We'll be right back. Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit spiritfireretreatcenter.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit jenroyster.com for more information. Could you swim with sharks? Is fear holding you back from living your life? The time is now to jump in and be courageous. Shelly Ryan has created a retreat to help you move past your fears with confidence. Join her June 30th through July 7th in Mexico. Have some fun, relax. Plus, you'll have the opportunity to be courageous with a whale and shark adventure. For more information, visit yournextchaptercoaching.com. The truth is funny. Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living LLC. For more information about Karen, visit KarenBenton.com. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Pat, and I'm here with Sarah Main. And as I said before, you know, Sarah has created an incredible way for us not only to look at life, but to live life. That's conscious confidence, a timeless wisdom. For those of you out there, go to her website, consciousconfidence.com. And you're going to find a lot of information, but most importantly, you're going to see the various radio shows, podcasts she's done to explain this. Today, today we are talking about the seven gateways from inspiration to transformation, and we're going to talk about what the seven gateways are. I got to tell you, when I got this for the show and I started to look at this and I thought to myself, wow, (laughs) we've been living, like, we've been, like, living this, but I didn't have the framework for it, and sometimes life seems chaotic, and yet, when I looked at this, there's something to be said about organized chaos, (laughs) (laughs) And, and there are gateways, so let's talk about them, because this is so important for people to hear. I think it's a message of hope and action, really. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Absolutely. If, if you have this, then you can understand where you're at and, and cut yourself a break. If, have some, bring some understanding of the process and not lose heart of your goal, where you want to go, what you want to do, the desire that's risen within you that you're following. You'll understand the process and that counts for a lot. Otherwise, we just unconsciously we get lost and we'll fall by the way so yeah but the first step in the seven steps because there's a lot to get through the first step 
is, uh, I just spoke about this, is Shubhecha in Sanskrit, which means a good desire, a good impulse. I've got a quote. I love this quote. It really inspires me every time I read it. It's by Patanjali. And anyone who's done yoga, studied yoga, been to a yoga studio, does yoga, will know about Patanjali because he's the, the granddaddy of yoga. So everyone follows um, Patanjali because of his yoga sutras. And all their pranas and asanas and all of that have come from Patanjali. And he says this about inspiration. When you are inspired by some great purpose, some extraordinary project, all your thoughts break their bonds. Your mind transcends limitations. Your consciousness expands in every direction. And you find yourself in a new, great and wonderful world. Dormant forces, faculties and talents become alive and you discover yourself to be a greater person by far than you ever dreamed yourself to be. Mm. And that's his description of inspiration. Oh. And that is unbelievable. You could spend a lifetime just studying that quote. I, I, I Thank goodness. I got to tell you, thank goodness that you've created Conscious Confidence because <laughs> I could spend time studying with you. <laughs> okay. We do not take enough time to, that. when you're reading that, there was an energy to that. See, there's yeah. an energy to that. Yes. That's the power of source wisdom, source mm. knowledge. Mm. It brings, it connects you directly with universal consciousness. Mm. That's what I was given and that's what I'm aiming to do with through conscious confidence, connect everyone to source wisdom. The power is there. It's their power, but you need the source wisdom. Uh, and it's the original wisdom, hence going back to the Sanskrit, because it's all there intact, pure, perfect and complete. That's the power. Mm. So with the inspiration, it's a good impulse. <coughs> I'm kind of a bit froggy. It's a, bit, it's a good impulse and it brings a desire and a decision with it. The desire will come and the energy comes and you say, I'm going to do something or I get this calling you, and, and in that decision you're saying yes to it, right? So they're, they're all the, the same things happening. It's all happening right. at the same time. Right. That Even if the, you don't shout yes, you might. Exactly. <laughs> you're all in. You might. You're, you're, all, you're in, right? You're you in. Find, you go, oh, I guess I suppose so. You've actually decided you're going to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. some form yeah. or another. Um, And that is the first gateway. And that is a quantum shift from where you were before to where you are now. Even if it's you're going to make a cake, right? Right. You've gone from that desire not being present to that desire being present. Um, And that's completely different. There's different energy there. There's different knowledge there. It's, It's all there. And the world has changed in that moment. And that I'm talking from deciding to knit a cardigan to, you know, pursuing a realization of your true self <laughs> let's take it like that right yeah yeah and and everything in between that's so right from that point of inspiration or good impulse then the second one is application or in sanskrit it's true inquiry and the sanskrit word is suicharana suicharana and the description of true inquiry is it's a, um, a an application of reason but you genuinely start seeking out new knowledge, okay? So in the case of the cake, you might want to go to a recipe book or get online and you start looking for new information, all right, how to make the cake, different cakes, all those sorts of things. Um, but with in terms of personal development, spiritual development, you start looking for new knowledge and you'll look for someone to teach you. All right, and these days the problem is there's so much out there, it gets very fragmented and distracted. It and, does. And it that's does. where, as you say, it gets very cliched and this and that. You, you need to come back to something that is a source wisdom and ideally, you know, from a proper teacher that is in a line or tradition because that carries the energy with it. That's yeah. the power of these traditions. So inquiry, it's a rational investigation into a new way of living um, and the steps required on the journey. Now, remember your desire, you've said yes to this. So you start looking um, and you start applying, trying to figure out and following the direction of applying that wisdom, 
all right? And, and, and your behaviour starts to change. You start making conscious decisions about changing your behaviour. Well, we all recognise this, you know, when we decide we, we want to um, lose weight. We will look into diets. We'll find something that we like or sounds reasonable. We'll get some guidance from someone we trust. And then we start changing our behaviour. We yeah. will eat that. We won't eat that. We'll eat this in certain proportions and not in those proportions. Our yeah. behaviour changes. So the physical habits change and in that true inquiry results in a change of mind and heart. So body, mind and heart are beginning to change as a result of following new knowledge. So it's not just knowledge we've known before because if we do that, we'll get more of the same. So we need that inquiry from a teacher or from some recognised um, authority. Let's put right. it that way. Right. And that applies to anything across the board. Yeah. And so what you're describing, right, is a process mm. from birth. Like we come in and we are dependent upon new knowledge. Yes. I don't know what happens when we get older and we don't think we need any more new knowledge when we get older. But the reason that we end up in a place where, you know, we're stuck is because we're not really inviting that inquiry in, right? Exactly, exactly. Well said, 100%. So it's the openness to the new knowledge and you try something and you see what works and what doesn't work. So your experience is already confirming the validity of the knowledge, but it has to be confirmed in your experience. Otherwise, there's no transformation because this is transforming in in. in like an alchemical process, it is alchemical really, theory into experience. It's like looking at a picture in a recipe book um, and salivating over the picture of the food. But until you actually decide to make the recipe, go and get the ingredients, follow the recipe in its order according to the way it's laid out. So follow that guidance and that knowledge um, in some form or another, and, yeah, there's variations which you find, but if you fundamentally do something different, you probably end up, you won't end up with what's pictured in the book that you desired. Oh, yeah. We've all done all, that, right? And that's I, that's also covered in these seven steps. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, and But then at the end, when you eat the dish, you get the full experience. You fully realise what you saw as theory on the page because this, the experience of eating is not the same as actually salivating at that picture mm. on, on, uh, on a, mm -hmm. a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. You are converting this knowledge, this theory, into actual experience that becomes part of you. Mm -hmm. And that is a process and you need further guidance along the way. You ask questions, you go back, you try it again, you go back and find out more. So that is a process, right? And all the time you're working against previous habits, right, habits that right. will have you go back to where you were before. Um, and <laughs> we all recognise that, right? And the thing is this is where knowledge like this helps you understand when you meet a habit where it's easy to get waylaid, you have a bigger vision that will save you from falling back. Mm. Um, and then the third step is assimilation or refinement of the mind. The Sanskrit is actually tanumanasa, which means attenuation of the mind. And attenuation is literally like starving the mind. I love that. And now what that means is the mind gets refined, it gets more focused. It's almost like you could just um, translate it as a thinning of the mind. So instead of just being everywhere, it gets more focused and you starve the mind of negative thoughts and feelings and you're doing that by your own desire. You choose not to dwell or feed on negative thoughts and feelings anymore. They're no longer in your, you don't have a taste for them. You don't desire them anymore. Mm. You want something greater and you will do the work required so that um, your mind is free of all that mental clutter. And, I love and that word. And by the way, I have not heard, 15 years I'm doing this, by the way, thousands yeah. of interviews. I have never heard that term used, attenuation of mind. Yes. And I want to make sure people hear what you're saying, because yeah. it has a different energy than assimilation or adjustment 
or yeah. but it has a attenuation is almost like this embodiment and freedom that gives us our own permission to change to change the mind right yeah. the possibility that it that we could even do it and it's very different it's really inviting and i've never heard that no it's it's amazing but think of an athlete you know an athlete decides they want to um compete in the olympics well they've got to sort of smarten up and tough and you know and and, and train and be disciplined so that their muscles are strong and yeah. and and attenuated i guess yeah. i don't know but you know but with that it, it doesn't sound much fun but with the attenuation of the mind the discipline of the mind the, and this is growing it's developing as you're practicing with the true inquiry there's attenuation of mind emerging there's a growing lightness and strength in yourself oh. because you're getting free of all this mental clutter that it frankly is like saddlebags it's incredibly mm. heavy to carry around so and it takes up a lot of energy so there's energy being released as we let go of all this negativity and um, and we're getting more precise and more focused and clearer. So that's the first three stages and they are crucial, crucial, critical stages. Nothing will change without this work. And um, this is coming from within. No one can make you do this. But you know what I love about this, and I'd like to continue it, if you will, and we can skip the break because... I really want people to hear these. You know, when I sat and looked at this and got ready for this over the weekend for the show, um, I, I can't explain what it was reading what you put together. And of course, everybody on Facebook Live is seeing this now. But individually, the, uh, each, each gateway is powerful, but together, massively <laughs> epic. <laughs> You know what I mean? And, and, and that's why I want you to talk about the fourth, if we could. Yeah, sure. Well, we need to talk a little bit before we go to the fourth. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, we need to talk about there's, a, there's like an interval between the third and the fourth. Huh. And this is crucial. to. This is why the, the proper knowledge is crucial. It's like an, um, an interval. Uh, I don't know, there's just there's a, there's a space and persistence and consistency and continuation of the inquiry and the discipline and the practice is required and you need to proceed and persist and continue because without actually um, crossing that interval, we the habits, the old habits, because they are old, and they're well established, will pull us back. They yeah. will, that will happen without constantly refreshing our resolve. And this is where we need, we may need good, we definitely need good company. We need people who can support us. And everybody knows this. Oh. You can't do this on your own. Um, I mean, you've been a marvelous support to me, you know, the just encouragement, even though you don't know anything about Sanskrit or the wisdom I'm talking about. I didn't need that. I, you know, that's <laughs> not, but just someone saying, no, this is good, you know, just keeping me directed because otherwise I think, really, you know, <laughs> really? Right. Do people right. want to know about this? You know? But the, you um, know what I love about what you're saying, Sarah, is, and I don't want to blow by it, and maybe we'll take a break before we do talk about illumination because what you just said is missing from almost everything that people are out there encouraging others to do and change. Yeah. And, and you said it, and I had an experience of it this weekend on Saturday, and that is we have to remember to continue the cycle of the first gateway, the second gateway, and the third gateway. Yeah. We have to remember to do that enough so that we can receive what comes next. That's right. Yeah. Because right? it's an emerging, evolving thing. And I'll, I'll just before we go to the break, I'll just, yeah. the example I was yeah. always taught, which always amused me, and certainly I was very young when I heard this, so it amused me, was if you desire, if you decide to knit a cardigan, unless you persist 
and follow the pattern and keep going, you'll end up with a tea cosy because you'll get waylaid. And that's an example of getting waylaid at the interval. <laughs> so oh yeah I don't want to end up with a tea cozy right. no no you don't boy I'll tell you though the power in this particular knowing wisdom yeah see if if we had the wisdom to understand just those three gateways can you imagine how many people wouldn't give up exactly right exactly. and how many times that those of us that are here today have thought about giving up yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not an exception to that, no, no one but is. something about it that we must have learned along the way. Let's take a short break. When we come back, if you're willing to go this far, then what is it that you can be ready and willing to accept and receive? Let's take a short break. We'll be right back with Sarah Main, Conscious Confidence. <music> What is a brilliant culture and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, uh, For those of you out there, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Conscious Confidence Radio. I get to share this time with the incredible Sarah Main, who, for those of you out there, has has brought forth uh, a lifetime of learning and a a wisdom that is timeless. And I want to make sure you all go to her website, ConsciousConfidence.com. But when you get there, you're going to see she's put together a beautiful guide for you uh, for balancing the whole person. So please go ahead and and get that. Um, Sarah, we're talking about the gateways, and I know that we've we've touched upon uh, the first three. You're going to touch upon the fourth, and 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 this is also important in that getting back to the three: one, two, three; one, two, three; one, two, three. We all have an experience with that, but some of us don't hang on. We don't hang on long enough to get four, do we? No. But tell us about four and why we really should hang on. (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) I'm going to, like any good teacher, I'm going to just quickly revise the first page um, so that four has something to sit on. But the, the first one is the inspiration the good desire, the good impulse, and that can hit at any moment. It could be a book. It could be listening to a person. It could be anything. Um, and that that's where that desire and, and a new energy enters and we start pursuing something, right? And then um, and the ultimate example of these seven gateways is moving from the individual to the universal. Mm-hmm. But it, this is a, I was taught it as a law of action as well. So if we decide to do something from the decision or the desire through to completion at full manifestation. So it can be, these can be understood at every level. Mm-hmm. This is what is operating. So we have a good desire. Then the, the, the next thing is the true inquiry, uh, the suicharana in Sanskrit. And this is where we find out someone who knows more, someone who has the answer that we feel um we desire and we start asking and rationally pursuing and 
following the directions that are given. And that is the where the rubber hits the road, mm-hmm. is the actual practice, putting it into practice, taking that picture that's in a recipe book, actually getting the ingredients, following the instructions and converting that into food, which we then eat. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, so we actually get the full experience of that recipe from personal experience. Mm. Um, and that's a process. Not yeah. easy, not always comfortable. You know, it, we know within ourselves if we do work. Any athlete will tell you they desire to be in the, the Olympics. It's not all sunshine and roses the whole time. They have to work. Yeah, no prepared, kidding. They're prepared to make that sacrifice. They're prepared to learn and do. So then we have um, uh, Tanumanasa, which is the third step, which is the attenuation, the refinement of the mind. This is where we get discipline. And from this point, um, there is progress has been made if we talk about, I'm going to use the wiggly fingers, progress, insofar as that certain habits have been um, taken over by better habits. We've got stronger, we've got lighter and more refined and we're choosing, we're making better choices, and we're doing this more naturally. Still, we just need to be vigilant, um, but ultimately there is a refinement and a strength, and we're beginning to be able to stand more strongly and not be weighed laid by habit. But, and this is a big but, and I'm holding up my teacher finger here. I love that teacher finger, by the way. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, Pat. <laughs> um, there's an interval, and this is the you know you decide to knit a, knit a cardigan, but you get waylaid one way or another with great ideas or habits or something. And you end up with a tea cozy. This interval, you have to persist with those first three steps, particularly steps two and three. You have to keep going and not lose hope. And you need good company. You need practice. You need to keep asking questions, and eventually, now we're up to stage four, there is a point which is called satwa pati, satwa pati, beautiful word, oh. and it's a state of clarity, illumination. And this is an establishment at a point where we can stand on our own two feet. We are not dependent on the knowledge and wisdom and guidance of someone that's, as, as a sense, outside of us it can be described as the teacher is then within we have that guidance from within rather than needing it externally and we do need it externally in the early stages otherwise we're just going to repeat what we already know we need new knowledge coming in Um, so this um, is a, a stage of clarity and a stage of strength and from this point it is virtually impossible to fall back right right Right. it is virtually impossible to fall back so understand that up until that point and the stages one two and three can take as long as it takes right years lifetimes whatever you like (laughs) whatever it is but from satwa pati we are at a, a level of stability strength and lightness that's lacking in the first three stages. And that's no judgment, it's just how it operates. Um, It's obvious that it's obvious to a person, and and if we're talking about the evolution of consciousness, um, it's obvious that egoic habits are destructive of freedom and happiness, and you just naturally avoid them. Mm -hmm. You see them, there's, there's no desire for them, you just don't partake anymore. And you know if you've transcended a habit for a particular food, there's no longer a desire for that food. Mm-hmm. It's not an issue. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've given up smoking, for example, mm-hmm. you see a cigarette, cigarette, there is no desire for it. It's just like, well, you know, mm. you don't, in some respects you don't even notice it anymore as an issue because that desire has fallen away. Mm. It's that level of strength. You don't have to be strong against it because it's still got a pull. It has no pull for you at all. Um, and we get we understand the difference um, in that in that case. So you're at a stable platform, and it's very unlikely to fall back from there. And you've got the strength to stand on your own two feet. And I would I say that conscious confidence is this point. And yeah. my 
my aim is to encourage people and teach people so that they, through their own efforts, following what I'm um, giving from the wisdom traditions in this day and age, will allow them to reach conscious confidence at this point where they don't fall back. They, they're strong. Can I ask you about this? Because this relates to the FUSE program as well. But yeah. one of the things I'm really struck by, and I think our listeners will probably relate to this, more so than not, we actually have the opportunity in our lifetime to experience this. Yes. And, and I, I mean, I don't know what it's like for other people, but I know for me, that thing that used to be hard, I don't know another word, but let's just say used to be hard. Yeah. It's not hard anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, doing this radio show. Right. Yeah. When when I first started this, I brought four giant binders into the studio. Right. <laughs> Laid them out across the entire thing. Benny, because that was my process. Yeah. But what you're talking about is freedom. Yes. Because hard is not freedom. And discipline is key. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. This is the attenuation of yeah. the mind. Yeah. And, you know, discipline is the way because it, it discipline means moving freely. And mm -hmm. um, any athlete, anyone at any level of um, ability in something in their life, take an opera singer and all of that sort of thing, do you think they just get there because they like singing, you know? Mm -hmm. They work at it, and to be the top of their field, they work. But the work is part of the process, and it's it's an enjoyable part. Yes, there's hard things, but it's also enjoyable. You know, do you think studying Sanskrit's a breeze? <laughs> you know, meditating and practicing of it is a lifetime. But underneath, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. It's what I deeply mm -hmm. desire. Mm -hmm. weirdly you know other people may have preferred to be doing something else they did but I, this is what I love doing you know but as you say it is part of the process and we can all recognize it in yeah. all sorts of areas in our life this is not a mystery it but it does explain the process it's um the way it was taught to us was you know it's a law of seven it's the law of action um it, it is like to, it's just a law that's governing and if you understand that though you understand very importantly the first three stages yeah. um, because our individual ego can get in and you know and i'm terrible and i can't do this or just oh. Lose energy and you just get that blah where you just can't do it anymore oh. or something. And this is where you need to, and it's not a problem. It's part of this, that that bottom stage. It, I talk about bottom and it doesn't make it sound bad. It's just it's those early stages. You need the support. You need the company. You need the encouragement. You need the guidance. You need the wisdom. You need the practice and the experience to find what works and what doesn't work. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. we all. Absolutely. It it is how it works, and we need, but we need to understand the persistence. And then, as you say, there's a certain point where you just, and it can be years later. You just suddenly go, ah. Oh. I know I we're not going to talk about it in this show, but I, I have to mention it. And I know we only have a few minutes left. I have found that in the process of learning something, of course, you know, I play table tennis and <laughs> I prepared for this show before playing over the weekend. And I had this experience and I'm telling you, I broke down in tears on the court. Now I have a feeling it had to do with preparing and reading this and the energy of it but the practice and the time that these mentors of mine put into helping me and the minute I was able to what's the word um uh to to actually do the thing do it mm -hmm. I cried yeah. because I didn't really know that if I would ever be able to play at that level how often in life are we told we're not able to play at a level? Mm -hmm. See, but this is non-judgmental. Yeah. Right? That's what I love about what you're doing. 
is you're creating an energy of openness for people, not narrowness. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference in conscious confidence and what you're building, as opposed to previous dialogue about this. You are the person that is opening and allowing the space for people to be all that they could be. And you're giving us a methodology. And I love that. You know, this is about the whole person, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And and um, this state, this state of um, illumination or satwapati or state of clarity that we're talking about with is, um, we can say it's where you have the system within yourself. That's another way. Um, it goes from being an external system. It, and another way of saying uh. it is. You, the discipline becomes naturalized. Mm. You naturalize the discipline. So it's not then something you're necessarily applying as an external thing, which you need to do. That is where it starts. And you do it for as long as it takes. So there's a humility in that to keep practicing. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's certain elements of it become naturalized mm. until that's just it. Your, your being the the upper levels of it the higher levels um it, it have a different nature about them and that's where um because the discipline is more naturalized and yet um in terms of the evolution of consciousness and completion um we go to a point of detachment the next one is a sang sakti which is penetration or insight and detachment and that's where we start seeing beyond the appearance of things. We're looking deeper mm. into things. Um, but we're seeing it from this point of strength, remember. Um, and we start seeing everything as consciousness. So despite the forms and the differences, we appreciate the underlying spirit or consciousness of everyone. And one example is you start seeing all people as part of your family. Mm-hmm. All children are your children. And you know, everyone's of one family. And that's not some blissed out state. That is a practical thing. And you approach people in, with that same love and care. Then the next level, it, it refines. And you can't do these. I have to emphasize, you can't get in there and run it. This is now operating at another level. And it's sacrifice and surrender internally. Very refined work, um, a different energy altogether. You can even tell probably from the tone of my voice. This is different. Um, then there's a, a level of dissolution padarta bhavani and um this is where the the differences start really dissolving um and there is just a unified consciousness um and then all all our personal effort has fallen away by net then mm. and we are in a state of presence and then it's said by invitation almost um it's mm. turiya which is complete merging mm. and that is a different level um mm of consciousness altogether. And Uh, we're going to be talking about this more. And, you know, we have uh, many more conversations Mm -hmm. we are going to have. And I know that you're bringing this forward and we're going to talk about this more because, you know, part of this is the work that you do and the coaching you do with people so that Mm -hmm. this doesn't become, you know, as we're very used to, an unfortunate accident on the way to becoming us. It really becomes a system by which we can embrace and not just one kind of learning experience, but we can apply it to everything. Everything, yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. And the thing is, because it's a natural law, it's operating anyway. So if you just Mm -hmm. understand that, you can. it it takes all the worry out (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, and you understand what's needed, certainly in those first three stages. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Now, you have a prayer for us today. I do. (laughs) Mm. Um, This is from the Yajur Veda. It's timeless wisdom. And it's the peace prayer. In heaven, peace. Peace in the space between. On earth, peace. On the waters, peace. In plants, peace. In trees, peace. Peace in all powers. In spirit, peace. Peace in everything. Peace alone, peace. Peace, peace peace dio shanti antarikshan shanti priti vi shanti apa shanti o shanti 
Vanaspataya Shanti, Vishwe Deva Shanti, Brahma Shanti, Sarvam Shanti, Shanti Reva Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Wow. Wow. Sarah, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, amazing. Uh, and by the way, folks can find out how to work with you. They can go to your website, consciousconfidence.com. Uh, and lots more to come about conscious confidence, about the timeless wisdom, and about being all in to change your life. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to take a short break, everyone. Thank you for tuning us in and turning us on. Thank you for listening to Conscious Confidence with Sarah Main. Join us next month on Transformation Talk Radio for more timeless wisdom with Sarah's exciting and innovative approach to living. Discover more joy, freedom, and step into your limitless potential. For more information on Sarah Main and her work, or to listen to past shows, visit sarahmain.com.